In this video, we're going to talk about some more system of equations problems, but ones that maybe have a little bit of a funky solution. So let's take a look at this very simple looking system. X plus Y equals 3 and X plus Y equals 4. Now, if you were to try to use substitution and solve it, it basically won't work. Here's why. If you were to solve for X, for example, and you get X equals 3 minus Y, and you were to plug that in here, this is 3 minus Y plus Y equals 4. Huh, the Y's cancel because minus Y plus Y is 0. So you're left with 3 equals 4. But we know that 3 doesn't equal 4. And in a way, you didn't actually need to do this math. This was obvious uh, just looking at the problem here. Because just looking at this problem, if X and Y add up to the number 3, that same X and that same Y can't also add up to the number 4. So basically, whenever you have a system of equations like this, where the variables on one side for both equations essentially end up equaling different numbers, then there is no solution. Meaning there is no pair x comma y that makes both of those equations true. Graphically, this is when two lines are parallel. Parallel with a different y-intercept. So for example here, if we were to convert both of these into um, mx plus b format, this first equation, if we were to subtract x, this first equation is really just like y equals negative x plus 3, and the second equation is y equals negative x plus 4. So graphing both of them out, one of them has an intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 1. The other one has an intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 1. So that's 4, that's 3. And they're, they're parallel, which means that they're because they have the same slope, they're never going to intersect with each other. So again, basically, whenever you were to, if you were to rewrite it in mx plus b format, y equals mx plus b, and you find that they have the same slope, but a different intercept, you know that those two lines will never intersect and that there's no solution. Let's take another look. Uh, let's take a look at another funky type of problem. Let's say you have x plus y is three, and your other equation is this: two um, x plus two y equals six. Now here, it's not as obvious on first glance that there's a problem. And again, you might try some substitution, and you'll basically here's what you'll end up finding. Long story short, this is the same equation as this. Because if you were to factor out a two here, this is really just saying two times x plus y equals 6, and dividing both sides by 2, you get x plus y is 3. So this second equation is literally x plus y is 3, and the first equation is literally x plus y is 3, which means they're both literally the same line. They're the same equation, given to you twice. So if you were to graph out both lines, they're both the same line. It's basically y equals negative x plus 3. It's, they're both the line with the intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 1. So they're both the same line. So what does that mean? Where do they intersect? Well, if it's the same line, they literally intersect everywhere, which means there's infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many points make both of these equations true. For example, if x is 1 and y is 2, bam. Or if x is 0 and y is 3, bam. So there's infinitely many points. It doesn't mean everything is a solution, just that there's infinitely many of them that add up to 3. And again, what if these two x and y add up to 3, then 2 times x plus 2 times y will necessarily add up to 6. So there's infinitely many solutions there, whenever the two lines are actually the same line. So that's why, you know, rewriting it to make one look like the other will basically help you reveal, is it actually the same line, or is it sort of the same line but with a different intercept, like same slope with a different intercept? And that will help you know, looking at that system, whether there's no solution infinitely many solutions, or in the normal case where it's neither of those two, exactly one solution. So with any system of linear equations, there's always going to be either no solution, exactly one solution, or infinitely many solutions. There's no such thing with these system of linear equations that, oh yeah, there's exactly two solutions. There could be like that if it's a quadratic, but with linear equations, no matter how many there are, if there's 18 equations and 18 variables, there's either zero solutions 
one solution or infinitely many solutions based on uh, whether, again, uh, they simplify to essentially contradict each other or they simplify to give you the same equation twice. Then, uh, so in general, if, if we're trying to generalize, in general, if you have more equations, so, so this is after you've eliminated the fact that some might be a duplicate or that some might be contradictory. In general, if there's more equations available uh, than variables, so if you have just two variables but three equations, at some point you're going to reach a contradiction and there's going to be no solution. But on the other hand, if you have more variables, like if you were to have three variables but only two equations, for example, or even just one equation and two variables, like x plus y is here, that's the only one equation with two variables, then you're going to have infinitely many solutions. So that's the general sort of trick. But if there's exactly the same number of equations as variables, after doing that sort of simplification check, then there's going to be exactly one solution. So now finally, let's wrap up today with uh, uh, an example where there's actually three equations and three variables. Now, it might look really tough at first, but the process is still the same. Substitution. Pick any equation and solve for any one variable and plug it in everywhere else. So let's just do that. Let's just look at this guy and let's just, you know, solve for this uh, z. It really doesn't matter what we solve for. You could also solve for this x, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to solve for this z by adding z to both sides and adding the 4 just to get z by itself. So I, were to take, I would take this. My instinct would be to say I'm going to add z to both sides. So the other side is just z. And I'm going to add 4, so that 4 comes here, and I already have an x plus 2y here, plus 4. So basically, I have z, I'm going to write this little meter. z is equal to x plus 2y plus 4, right? So z equals x plus 2y plus 4. So I know that from this equation. I've already used this equation. Now, I'm going to substitute that in for the z in these other two equations. So here. And here, notice this one will have to distribute a negative. This one will have to distribute a 3. But again, the process is still the same. Solve for one equation and one variable and substitute. So now I'm going to take a look at the second equation here and see what it simplifies. So the second equation, I'm going to write that in green, is going to, I'm just writing this down, negative 2x plus 4y minus z. But again, z is really this thing. So minus, distributing the negative, minus x minus 2y minus 4 and all that equals on the other side is 6. All right now I'm just going to simplify like terms and whatnot. So I have negative 2x minus x that's minus 3x and then I have 4y minus 2y that's going to be plus 2y equals I guess 10 because I can add 4 to both sides. All right that's that's as far as we can go with that for now. Now let's look at the second equation and do the same thing. So with this blue equation I'm going to write, it's copying this down, 2x plus 2y plus 3z. So I'm going to distribute 3 to this z now. That's going to be 3x plus 6y plus, let's see, 3 times 4, 12. And all that equals, the other side of this equation is 1. Okay. So let's simplify like terms again. So I get 5x is 2 plus 3x. 2y plus 6y is 8y. So plus 8y equals negative 11, I guess, because subtract 12 from both sides. So, all right. So now, so after that, so all I've done so far, again, it was tedious because you have to be careful, but really the process was just the same, right? But all I've done, so once I've just substituted, now this problem has become a regular two equations, two variable thing to solve. Because now there's two equations, two variables. So now I can solve this the same way I would solve any two equation thing. So here I could just pick one variable, solve for one. You know, so I could just, for example, pick the y and say uh, solve for y. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So 2y equals 3x plus 10 divided by 2y equals I'm just going to write this as 3x plus 10 over 2, right? And then I can substitute that in. Substitute that in for y here. So this becomes 5x plus 8y 
8 times y, y is 3x plus 10 over 2 equals negative 11. All right. So now, again, I can simplify further. This 8 and the 2 can cancel. This becomes a 4. So this is 5x plus, distribute to 4, 12x plus 40 equals negative 11. So adding these, I get 17x equals, add the 40 to both sides, negative 51. Divide by 17, you could use your calculator if need be, but that gives you x is negative 3. So once you have your x, the others are easy because you sort of already have them. So once you have your x, your y, we can just look at this guy. y is 3x, so 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 plus 10 over 2, which negative 9 plus 10 is 1, so that's 1 over 2, so a half. So I have x is negative 3, y is a half, so so far my solution I'd write as x is negative 3, y is 1 half, and z is, I can just plug that back into the original guy here. z is, remember, x plus 2y plus 4. So x we saw was negative 3, plus 2y, 2 times a half is 1, plus 4. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2, so z is 2. My final answer here is this, negative 3 for x, half for y, and 2 for z.